Welcome. Thanks for joining us here on the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection since 1991. We're very happy you're with us here on this Friday, December 4th. I'm Deb Gillard, your host of the program. And of course, we wouldn't be coming to you if it were not for the generosity of our wonderful sponsors uh, now and over the course of the years supporting this program and bringing you all this great information. They include our premier supporters, the City of Owatonna, Express Employment Professionals, Owatonna Public Utilities, and United Way of Steel County, who we'll be hearing from a little bit later on. Our primary supporters, Amy Swain Hearing Centers, Brookdale Senior Living Solutions, Little Theater of Owatonna, and the Owatonna Foundation. Our interlude supporters include Abraham Consulting Technologies, Bremer Bank, Brenda Bednar Mortgage Office, Glenn Mager and Michael Mager of the Brick Mager Funeral Home and Medford Funeral Home, Carlson Brandstead and Company CPAs, ERA Gillespie Real Estate, Fairview Animal Medical Center, Horizon Eye Care, Owatonna Business Incubator, the Steel County Historical Society, Steel County Transitional Housing, the Third Hand Video Productions, and TPS Insurance. And of course, when you patronize these businesses and support these organizations, tell them thank you as well. Um, and, and we ask that you support them just like they support us and tell them thank you for being supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. If you or someone you know would like to be a sponsor on our program, please get a hold of Leanne, 390-5751, or email owatonnatoday at charter.net, and she'll be happy to get you the information on sponsorship. We have a very great show coming up for you today. A little bit uh, after we come back from our first break, we are going to be talking with representatives from Steel County United Way, or United Way of Steel County, whichever way. I probably said it wrong, so I gave you both. Um, and finding out a little update on how they're doing right now. A little bit later on in the program, our Christmas bird count that is just, of course, around the corner. So let's take this break for those sponsors, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. The majority of fatal home fires happen at night when people are sleeping. Smoke alarms give you time to escape. We recommend that you have a smoke alarm in every sleeping room of the house and on every floor in the common living areas. Smoke alarms should be tested monthly and batteries should be replaced at least once a year. This is a safety tip from the Oatana Fire Department. Hello, I'm David Einhaus with the Oatana Foundation. Thank you to all of our donors who have helped make Oatana a better place to live. Will you join us today with a financial gift? Oatana Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. Hi, I'm Nate Chesney and I play Scrooge as a young man. And I'm John Terrell and I play Mr. Fezziwig in LTO's current production of A Christmas Carol, directed by Jeffrey Jackson and sponsored by Wells Fargo. Performances of A Christmas Carol will be held Friday and Saturday, December 4th and 5th at 7.30 p.m. with a matinee on Sunday, December 6th at 2 p.m. And again the following Thursday through Saturday, December 10th, 11th, and 12th at 7.30 p.m. with a matinee on Sunday, December 13th at 2 p.m. Tickets are available at the LTO box office by calling 451-0764 or online at littletheaterofowatonna.org. Don't be a humbug. Don't miss LTO's production of A Christmas Carol. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us on this Friday, December 4th. And we welcome in studio Kim Schaffenbuehl, the Executive Director of United Way of Steel County, and that is the right way to say it, correct? That's the right way, Welcome, Kim. both my last name and uh, the, the agency, so thank you, you did, you did good. <laughs> All right, don't give me too much because I could still mess up, but Deb Buck has an easy name. Welcome, Deb, how are you? you? And Deb is the Director of Customer Service at Justin's, mm -hmm. and so we'll be talking with you a little bit later about um, how things are going at Justin's in your campaign, too. Okay. So, thank you. But we'll start off with Kim. Um, we are well into the campaign here for this year. How are we doing? Yes. Well, you know, that's what that's the question that everybody wants to ask at this time, and I have the same answer for everybody. I'm not quite sure yet. Okay. It seems like it's going great. Of course, this is my first campaign since mm -hmm. I'm the new executive director this year still. Still playing that new card. Um, as long as you can. can <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, our goal is 670000 mm -hmm. and as of last week, we're right about 53%. Okay. Um, and uh, then we got another big uh, company in, but it's not all the way in. We just have 
have uh, we have some of their numbers, but not, not all their numbers. So I'm going to say we're like 60 percent of our goal. Okay. So still needing everybody to remember to you know write their checks and send them in, and you know we're still waiting for um, some of our larger uh, businesses to get in their their workplace campaigns and, and make their corporate contributions as well. And it is hard. You know all those things are going mm -hmm. on out there in the right. community. You just may not have exact numbers on a day to day basis. Right. So it is really hard to, to to try to predict that until we get a little bit closer to the end, and the campaign yes. actually ends when. It it ends December 31st. Okay. All right. So yep. it's time to get those donations going. If you if you have not and you're an individual, if mm -hmm. you are in a workplace, large or small, um, kind of yes. want to put the challenge out there for people to to work yeah. together in their places of business and, and get those donations coming. And Yeah, absolutely. We, we rely very heavily on the generosity of our business community for sure. Mm -hmm. And they have always uh, really done us, done us well in this respect. I want to say that probably 60 to 75 percent of our total goal comes in from the from the workplace campaigns and and from from corporate donors and um, you know that's what United Way really is all about it's everybody working together to make sure that we can do the work that needs to be done in our community to make sure that there's opportunities for everybody that nobody is left without a without a home or left without food on the table that everybody has the opportunities to rise above any sense of poverty and to to have um, the opportunity for successes in in their lives so okay. And how many organizations will be beneficiaries this year? We have 16 agencies okay. that have 24 total programs that are being supported. Okay. And actually, it's not quite final yet, but we have a couple more that have applied that it looks like we're going to be adding a couple more agencies yet this year. Okay, and you're next. able to do that. And I know that's a really rigorous <laughs> process. And yes. You talked about it I'm sure on other programs mm -hmm. but it is it's not something that you or the board takes lightly it's something that gets very very careful consideration yes. for those agencies yes absolutely I mean we have um, a very um, you know transparent process in that that there's everybody has to um, give us the same material so mm -hmm. we're, we're looking for lots of different um, proofs of, of their 501c3 um, status, of their, um, you know, a registry with the state, those types of things, okay. as well as their financial um, strength mm -hmm. and stability, um, and, and what they have going on in their program and how it benefits our community. Okay. We've really moved into um, a focus of income, education, and health. So making sure that our community really has those building blocks of a good community. Okay. Um, so those are the things that we're looking to, to fund and the agencies, the type of agencies that we're, we're looking to um, bring into our member agency status. Okay. Well, should we talk with a little bit with, with Deb and see how things yes. are going at Justin's? How are you, Deb? I'm good. Good, good. And you have been involved with uh, the Justin's United Way campaign mm -hmm. for how long? Oh, many years. Many, many years. Um, okay. You're the go-to gal. We, we always have a, a campaign within mm -hmm. our company, okay. and I encourage anybody um, in a business, it, it really does make a difference when you have a dedicated effort. Mm -hmm. uh, so every year, usually in the October, November time frame, uh, we set a whole week aside uh, for United Way, okay. and we ask for volunteers. We always get volunteers to go on the committee because we we try to do some fun things. Yeah. Uh, obviously, our goal is though to educate our employees uh, with the ultimate goal of you know giving. Mm -hmm. uh, but for people that you know maybe struggle that can't give, uh, we definitely encourage advocating or volunteering also. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a fun week. Um, and we have tons of wonderful activities. Uh, this year, uh, I didn't come out totally clean on that because uh, we had uh, whipped cream pie I in the I was waiting to what that meant. I had no idea where you were going with that. <laughs> hey, we'll do you anything to raise pies? some money. So yeah, we had some of the people on our leadership team uh, willing to have the whipped cream pies <laughs> put in our faces. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. I can Did safely bring a picture? Yeah, <laughs> pictures, pictures. I can safely say that's not something I've ever experienced. It, but it kind of looks fun, but maybe it was. not. Was it? I mean, to get it whipped was. cream in the face? It was. And people were just kind of like, well, I don't know if I should do this. <laughs> and we it. said, hey, this is all for a great cause, and this is all in fun. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a chili um, cook-off contest. Uh, so bingo, so it was just a whole week. Every day we had some uh, fun activities, like I said, with the ultimate goal 
of you know mm -hmm. giving. So and then. What we've done for years uh, and very, very popular, we have each department put together baskets, oh, themed okay. baskets, which is a good time of year right now with the holidays time, right around yeah. the corner. Um, so the baskets are given and then we raise a lot of money and bidding on those and the highest bidder gets to take what those baskets home. Great ideas. Kim, as I'm sure yes. you hear from businesses, you yeah. hear all sorts of good mm -hmm. ideas like this. but. So you're very proactive beginning that process yes. early in the game of the mm -hmm. campaign and making it really fun and interactive mm -hmm. for your employees to be a part yes. of it. So the United Way, it, it's not, it, it doesn't sound just like, you know, coming to ask for money, but you've, right. but yeah. it's it's a whole event mm -hmm. or series of them, mm -hmm. it sounds like, at Justin. Yes. What a great way yes. to do that. And, and I think everybody understands, you know, the importance of United Way, mm -hmm. uh, even if they have not had a need. Um, you know, they know of people or associated mm -hmm. with people, so they understand the importance of that. Yeah. So, um, and many, many companies in our community do that yeah. and have Good a great time you. and, mm -hmm. you know, raise the needed funds to support the programs and the agencies. I'm guessing a lot of your money comes in here now with those baskets for the holidays yes. like you were saying that raises yes. a good amount too mm -hmm. and you're on track as far as you know yes good good yes. for you oh mm -hmm. deb thanks for everything yes. that you do mm -hmm. at Justin's and for all the Justin's mm -hmm. employees that that take part again mm -hmm. either financially or in in mm -hmm. a way mm -hmm. to volunteer if they're able to do something mm -hmm. that way too mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. circumstances yes. are always different in our lives and if we can do something you know that Absolutely. is not necessarily mm -hmm. monetary mm -hmm. one year we would certainly hope that people step up the other way mm -hmm. so Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I know we want to save just a little bit of time mm -hmm. here at the end to talk mm -hmm. about opportunity programs that yes. um, are happening yes. right now. You know, we have um, two different kind of ways that we're working at United Way right now. We have our traditional way, which is what you already asked about, mm -hmm. which is the agencies that um, our campaign really funds. And then we also have a strategic planning process, which develops programs which are primarily grant funded. Yes. And um, we just were award we just um, learned that we were awarded a Bremer grant for a new transportation project that we are doing to um, that we are, are doing in conjunction with Viracon to mm -hmm. help get workers um, to their to their plant um, during shift time. Okay. So we're we have um, we're going to be getting a bus and picking up people um, that don't have cars and um, being able to get them to work there. Congratulations. So more on that later. Yeah. It's this is just getting brand getting new. rolling brand new, hot off the presses. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you heard it here first. Right? <laughs> Scooped. <laughs> that is wonderful. What a yes. great program. Yeah. And we have really great community partners with this, again, with the Bremer uh, Foundation as well as Viracon and, and United Way all working together on this. Okay. Well, keep up the good work, Deb and Kim and everyone mm -hmm. that's involved in your places of work. Um, in your places of worship, in your neighborhoods, in your families. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people pull together to make all these things, mm -hmm. to make us the community that we are. And United Way of Steel County is such a huge, huge part of that. So thank you very, very much and for letting us know how things are going. I'm sure we'll be updated maybe before the end of the campaign. I don't know yes. if Leanne's got you back on here, but in any case, update us. We'll be happy to pass it along to our, mm -hmm. our viewers. Great. And certainly post-campaign, I know we'll be hearing more then, yeah. too to see how it all went and that we hit goal and all that good stuff. Yes. So Kim, Deb, yes. thank you very thank much. You. We'll take a break for our sponsors and we'll be right back to talk about counting birds. United Way is all about changing lives, reaching out a hand, advancing the common good, creating opportunities, inspiring hope, navigating obstacles, Please join us and all Napa Distribution Center employees by giving generously, advocating for a better quality of life, and volunteering your time. We all win when we live united. united. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Otana Today Show. I didn't just want another job, I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve.
I'm Bill Owens with the Owatonna Business Incubator. Whether your business is just starting out or is expanding, we have the office space and manufacturing space that you need. As the Small Business Counseling Center for this region, we are able to help you in your expansion or your startup of your business. We are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. It is Friday, December 4th, and as I mentioned, we're going to be talking Christmas bird count. I'd like to welcome in the studio, Daryl Hill. How are you, sir? Good, thank you. And Nels Thompson, how are you? I am well, thank you. I think we've had you on before talking birds, and so we're going to do it again and encourage people to get involved in the Christmas bird count. So lots of good information that we want to pass along to people, but let's start with you, Daryl. Um, you've been involved in this, I'm sure, for about as long as you Only 44 remember. years. Only, <laughs> only, yeah. yeah. And, and and that's in fact, Nelson, Nelson and I are the only founding two fathers. that did it yep, <laughs> all 44 years. So. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. Good for you. So that's how long it's been in existence mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. here. Is this yeah. something that's going on, that goes but, on all over the country? Yes, yeah, yeah, this goes over all North America, South America, okay. Central America, and it's all about the same time. That's why it's called the Christmas bird count. Okay. And the reason they do that is because people will count in all those different areas in like Owatonna, Faribault, and so forth. Okay. And then it's like a snapshot because it's within a two-week period. It's like you take a snapshot of the continents mm -hmm. and you can tell then about how many birds there are. Okay. And, and is the movement of the birds moving north or south. So it's, it's the largest public scientific project in the world. That is amazing. Any idea how many people get involved? In, uh, I mean, I know we know that here, but I mean, I, I would assume well, it's thousands and thousands of people in the world. Uh, yes, I think there were uh, 2,000 2, and um, mm. 2,230 from around the world, that many count areas. Okay. So their birds will oh, be in wow. the millions, oh, millions absolutely. of birds. How very interesting. So let's talk about it. It is the Christmas bird count. It's not on Christmas Day. It is uh, the weekend yeah. before, correct? Yes. In this case. Uh, and this is what we'd like you to do is put on your calendar mm -hmm. uh, December 19th. It's a Saturday before Christmas. Okay. And you can. that's the only day that we can count. It's, okay. Uh, and, um, when the data is going and, to be collected. Yeah. And, and we can only count in a certain area, which is a 15-mile diameter with Havana the center. So okay. if you live within that circle and you have a feeder, as an example, we'd like you to count birds on that day for okay. us. What if I don't yeah. have a feeder, but my if neighbor you, does? Well, you can count that as long as you don't overlap with that person doing it. Okay, so, yeah, so as long as they're not you doing it? Right there. Sure. Okay, but mm -hmm. I have a feeder that I can look at, What it, you know, I'm even at... What if at my workplace there's a feeder and nobody else is doing That's, it, then I could do that. That can buy if, okay. if it's in, this, in that, yes. Okay. So we have feeder counts, and then we have in the field where we go out into this 15-mile diameter circle, and we look in the country for the, for the hawks and the turkeys and the pheasants and this kind of thing. Okay, okay. So... Um, the and Daryl office. always schedules good weather for that day. Sweet. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Is that not usually what it is? Is that? <laughs> I'm guessing that's just up in the yeah. air, isn't it, like yeah. everything else? In 44 years, we've had thawing weather. We've yep. had 20 below weather. Yep. So we have had everything. Okay. okay. Never know. So well, let's talk a little bit about those different types of counts. Um, we've got mm -hmm. the home feeders, and, and Nels, let's just okay. let's talk about a little bit about how that home feeder count works. So I have a feeder, and what do I need to do that day? Well, on that particular day, if you're doing a feeder count at home, uh, you look out the window once in a while and see what you got. Okay. And um, what you need to be aware of is that, you know, <laughs> the thought is, well, how, how do I know I'm not counting the same bird two or three exactly. times? Yeah. You don't, when you count them, you count as many as you can find. Let's say blue jays. If you see three blue jays at 10 o'clock and at 11 o'clock you see two blue jays and at 12 o'clock you see four blue jays, the count for that period, if that's when you quit, would be four. 
So okay. you just take the biggest number of, of what oh, you okay. get to look at out there. Okay, the largest number over the course of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a similar kind of a situation in the country. Uh, the, the circle is 15 miles wide and it's divided into four quadrants. Okay. And uh, those of us in the northeast quadrant, for example, uh, drive around. We drive all the roads and uh, that we can in that area and count what we see. And what we see out in the country is often uh, different to some degree, at least. We see snow buntings and long spurs and things that are not likely mm -hmm. to be in town. Okay. So we get that kind of a field bird, as I mm -hmm. refer okay. to. Those, so those are the too. field counts. Yep. And you have some direction. Say somebody has never done this before. Do you have some kind of direction as to what I do? Like, say, I'm kind of intrigued by this and I want to yeah. try doing a field count. If you're interested in doing a field count, which is cool, mm -hmm. um, best thing to do might be to go through Daryl and make sure that he can find an area for you that's not already being done. Okay. It's difficult to know if an area is being done because you know, when you come into an area, we may be up in the far corner of it and you sure. come in a little... Sure. And we'd never even see each other in okay. that kind of distance. Nels has his area that he usually <laughs> does each year. Okay. But if somebody wanted to go on a field count, we like to have at least two people on each count. So okay. they could contact me and I would put them on a team that goes out in the country in the afternoon because we right. do that also. Okay. It'd be nice to commit to about a half a day at least. Yeah, a half That's a day. That's the one thing. Okay. <clears throat> no matter me. when that half a day is, I mean, yeah, start morning early or afternoon is fine. Or, but, okay. yeah, because we go out uh, early mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. hang it up about eleven thirty or so for some lunch, okay. and then go back out again about twelve thirty maybe, and then work okay. until dark. All right. Well, I know we've got a little visual here that we do want to take a look at. There are some, <laughs> they, they were referring to them as tricky birds. Yeah, um, there are some but tricky birds. But there are birds. some that are going to be a little more tricky to identify. Well, and for most see, people that like, watch feeders, it's we, probably we pretty easy to know how you, what your friends are. But there's a few there. Let's yes, see if I can make put this put it right in front of your face, Daryl. <laughs> yeah, Thanks a lot, guys. Nice look you got how now, Daryl. <laughs> we knew you were for the birds. We need to lean it backwards or forwards there. Can we yeah. see that pretty well? Okay. I've got little sticky notes on yours for me to kind of guide myself. If you see pinkish birds, years ago, a pinkish bird was always a purple finch. Okay. Now, more likely, it's a house finch. Oh. And the way to sort those two out is that the purple finch has pinkish sides, the house finch has brownish sides or stripes or whatever. Okay. The females are, are a little trickier. <laughs> uh, the female house finch is a pretty drab, brown, stripy bird as is the, the female purple finch, but the purple finch has a pretty dramatic white line over its eye. Oh, sure. And okay. that sorts them out pretty well. See, now that you point that out, I can, yeah. yep, I can even and do so that. And so that's what you kind of look for. <laughs> okay. Goldfinches are goldfinches in the summer, but in the wintertime, they always look pretty drab. And okay. They're still kind of fun. But check them over pretty close because sometimes there's a pine siskin mixed in with them. Okay. And a pine siskin will look for all the world just like a dirty finch. Okay. <laughs> until you realize that it's stripy. The sizes are about the same, oh, the behaviors sure. are about the same, but through the wing there's this black, white, black band, which is not always real vivid, but, but uh, that does sort them out from the house finch female, for example, which has none of that. Okay. Okay. So Those are probably the trickiest there. of the tricky. Yeah, it looks like that too, and then and we have some that st definitely stand out a little bit yeah. more on their own. Let's see here. Am I Less missing complicated. anything? Some of these you're not likely to see, but it's possible. Okay. In this grouping up here, everybody pretty much knows chickadees. Mm -hmm. But what you sometimes might miss is this little guy here, the red-breasted nuthatch. Oh, and if it okay. doesn't have a black bib, but it's about the same size, it's probably a red-breasted nuthatch. Okay. They do have a pretty dramatic white stripe above the eye. No okay. such stripe on a chickadee. Okay. But uh, these, I've seen these this fall already, and so I know they're around. So right. some of you in town is, you know, may have those, especially we if you've got evergreens around. Those. Okay. A white-breasted nuthatch, eh, not too many people are fooled by that. Okay. They have that dramatic look, Very distinct, all yeah. white through here, and they're bigger than a chickadee, and they, they hang out with chickadees, but they're, they're rarely <laughs> they're confused. Yeah, okay. they're buddies. Hairy woodpeckers are big, and downy woodpeckers are not so much. Downies are maybe the size of... Uh, maybe a purple finch, though that's oh. kind of awkward because they don't get close to each other usually. The thing that, and the hairy woodpecker is about the size of a robin. Okay. But they, their body shape is different, so sizes are nice, but uh, it's, you know, it's hard to confuse those two. But sometimes this guy can fluff up and look bigger, and sometimes this guy is pretty sleek and he looks smaller. Okay. If you can get a look at the tail feathers, the downy has got dirty tail feathers, okay. dirty downy, see? Dirty downy, yeah. Yeah, little spots. No such spots on the, um, 
uh, hairy woodpecker. Okay. And since all of the drawings you run into have side views, most of you don't realize that there's a black band that runs through the middle of that red stuff on the back of the head of the, of the uh, hairy woodpecker. Super interesting. So there you, know you are. What? Yeah, we, and let's, let's let people know, because otherwise we're going to run out of time, <coughs> how they can get involved. Daryl, how can, how can okay. somebody say, yep, I want to do this this year? Well, what you just let me know. Okay. And I will then explain to you if you do a, a feeder count mm -hmm. at your home. Okay. If you, if you go into the field, then it will put you on a team. And I can can do that. Can so either way, that. if you'd let me know, okay, uh, you might be interested that uh, last year we had sixty-seven people take part. Very nice. We've had it up to eighty-seven, and we would like to get as many people involved in it this year as we possibly can. That sounds very interesting. December nineteenth. Get it on your calendar. Call Daryl. There's the phone number. Um, get involved with this year's Christmas bird count and um, and help them out. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Can I get a plug in? This chart is available from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Okay. It's uh, given out to participants in the Project Feeder Watch, oh, which perfect. is another citizen science okay. uh, So that's going to help them identify in their habitat. Yeah, habit. these are, it's right. too late now maybe, but. All right. Very good. Next no, year's Cheryl, coming. Thank you so much for thank joining you. us and have a successful count this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. We'll take a break for our sponsors and we'll be right back. Hi, Warren Abraham, Abraham Consulting Technologies, your one-stop technology shop. We support the Otana Today Show. Otana Public Utilities, real people, real reliable, real progress. Making life a little easier day after day. Taking pride in our community, listening to what you say. A voice you can talk to. We're growing with you. And we'll wrap up with a few announcements of all the things that are going on here this weekend. Of course, starting this evening um, and going in through the weekend, it's uh, Christmas at the Village and the Steel County Historical Society, things going on at the History Center. Um, take a look at those things. The holiday home tour for them is on Sunday the 6th. We also have the LTO play beginning this weekend, as you've heard and seen throughout the week. Um, so do try to catch one of those performances this week if that works for you. Let's see, what else did we have going on? We have the Star of Hope lighting for Owatonna Hospice. That will be this Sunday, December 6th at uh, 5 o'clock, uh, beginning at Daybreak Church and watching the lighting of the beautiful star and having the rest of the program then at, the, um, at Daybreak Church again. We talked about the holiday train coming in. It's going to be in that Wenger location, stopping, providing entertainment, bring your donations for the food shelf. That will be at 4.05 on Sunday and exiting Owatonna by 4.34, so make plans to catch that. And I can't even remember if I've left anything out, but um, I think that's mostly what's going on this weekend, so do take part in as much as you possibly can. What a lot of great family entertainment going on for this weekend. We do also want to pass along a note from the uh, police department too. It's good to be aware of what's going on during the holiday season. They have also been seeing some uh, incidents involving thefts from area businesses, um, really some larger type of things, construction equipment, trailers, and those types of things. If you have any information that you can help and provide to the Owatonna Police Department, please give them a call at 774-7207 so we can get those thefts under control and stopped by the police department. Coming up next week, we will be talking about the Owatonna Art Center Christmas display, Beating the Holiday Blues, Owatonna, Owatonna Foundation will have an update for us, talking classic cars, uh, Owatonna, I can't even read my own writing, Christmas, <laughs> oh, Christmas, what is that, Owatonna Flu Clinic, Owatonna what clinic, <laughs> what did I write down, and and oh, free, oh, it's on a free clinic and books for Christmas with Little Professor Book Center. So please join us next week. We'll see you then. <laughs>